I've been asked to make this video in support for the Council of Ex-Muslims. I support them for many reasons, one of which being that I believe all human beings should be free to enter or leave a religion without indoctrination, pressure, intimidation or violence. Here is the story of how I became interested in Islam. I was raised by an agnostic and an atheist. Between the ages of 7 and 11 I was made to attend Christian morning assemblies at school. I never realised how much of an effect that had on my life until years later I was being taught comparative religion at about the age of 13 and caught myself thinking the claims in all of these religions are all so stupid except of course Christianity. Later in life I wanted God so I started to read the Bible. I didn't make it past the Old Testament According to this book, God was something that I would never want a relationship with. So for me, the Bible was obviously wrong. Jesus never said, the Old Testament is a load of rubbish. So Jesus was ruled out along with all the others. I spent many years believing in a God with no religion. I used to believe that God guided my whole life. One day an adult education catalogue fell through my door and I felt overwhelmingly compelled to learn something new. I opened it to a random page and read the first subject I laid my eyes on. Arabic. I saw this as God's confirmation that I should pursue my recent curiosity about Islam. So I started my Arabic lessons. I continued to talk to God many times every day. He was like my best friend. My wife got pregnant and we were very excited. Soon after we started to experience complications. It was touch and go for a while, but a scan revealed a heartbeat, so I thanked my best friend God for looking after our baby. Then our baby died. I was lost. Surely God could have stopped this. Was my request unreasonable? Did I hate God? No. I didn't even blame God, but I needed answers. So I prayed to God even more, for hours at a time and then it happened. God started to answer me. I knew the difference between random thoughts and God because the words of God washed over me with a warm loving feeling. This felt different. God explained to me why my baby had to die and it made perfect sense which was not surprising since it was God that told me directly. God then went on to tell me about the creation of the universe even revealing some information using Arabic I had not yet learned so that I could be sure I was really being spoken to by God. One day a friend at my children's school was talking to me and I let slip that I was learning Arabic. She is a British convert to Islam and was very happy about it. She mentioned miracles in the Quran and told me a few. This was exactly what I would expect God to do. Rather than having to appear to us every few hundred years to prove to us its own existence, it would write a book, but it would also make sure that this book stood out by being absolutely perfect, without error, and containing information which no person could possibly have known at the time. As I read about these miracles, I was very impressed. By this time I was praying around ten times a day or more. I didn't eat pork. I didn't drink or smoke, I didn't gamble. I called God Allah. I prostrated towards Mecca to pray to Allah and voiced the words Allahu Akbar as I did so. I started to grow my beard to be just how God had intended. I'd even had a long discussion with my amazingly understanding wife who had agreed she would wear a headscarf if I decided to take the final step and become a Muslim. And so I was finally ready to read the Quran. I was blown away. I was absolutely amazed that people could read the same words that I was reading and think they were beautiful, perfect and even miraculous. I kept seeing things which suggested that the Quran was written by a 7th century man with an incorrect understanding of the universe. I kept excusing them, giving the benefit of the doubt, but I couldn't help thinking to myself, why would God include something that looks so blatantly wrong knowing that it would cause people like me doubt in the future. The Quran says that nobody can believe unless Allah wills them to. Considering I had done all of this and genuinely meant every step of it, 
Why would God stop me from seeing the truth if the Quran was in fact true? I had to admit it. The Quran was not beautiful. It was repetitive, full of threats of dire consequences for not believing, boring, uninspiring and ultimately wrong. I stopped reading it part way through and decided to research every Quran miracle claim I could find. I researched each claim in great detail looking for predated historical accounts of that information already being known, whether somewhere else in the Quran ruled out the miracle claim and so on. Every claim I found was easily explained. Not one was a miracle. In every case it was clear that the person making the claim should know that their claim is unfounded and yet they were still claiming miracles. It wasn't only Muslims that were lying to me though. When later looking at typically Christian websites which presented evidence of errors in the Quran I found that many of these sites also made claims that simply weren't true. I was being lied to by both sides. I eventually read three different English translations of the Quran from cover to cover. By this time I neither wanted the Quran to be true nor did I want it to be false. All I wanted was to know the truth. It's only when you care for the truth without having a preference for what the truth should look like that you can actually say you're being open minded. After reading all the way through I was more convinced than ever that this book was not written by a perfect all knowing being. With just 1400 years of scientific discovery I would be able to reword certain phrases in the Quran to more accurately reflect reality without turning the Quran into a science book. How can a mere human like me possibly outclass the creator of the universe? That would be impossible. The idea that God would make a book that stood out from the rest was firmly implanted in me now and yet there was nothing to differentiate the Quran from any other religious claims I'd ever seen. It was yet another appeal to believe without evidence because that's what God loves most. Whilst ignoring the fact that this is exactly what every follower of every other wrong religion also does. If you should believe without evidence, where do you start? More importantly, where do you stop? I don't reject Islam because I hate it. I reject it because despite wanting it to be true, I couldn't convince myself that it was. I don't hate Muslims. In fact, I don't hate anyone in the world. If you are a Muslim hater watching this, I think you're being irrational. There is no single Islam, just as there is no single Christianity. Stop telling Muslims what they believe and try asking them instead. Your neighbour's grandmother is really not trying to take over the world. I have changed from a person who believes without evidence to someone who requires claims to be justified. I used to be in a mentally dark place, but Islam has guided me to the right path and helped me to see the light. I read science books these days. So it's been quite an emotional journey for me really as you can see. I've gone from not thinking about the universe to being a deist. Then I became a wannabe Muslim. From there I progressed to believing that God was talking to me and that he had a special mission for me to spread love throughout the world and I was his messenger and I was going to bring peace. And then ultimately I ended up becoming an atheist. One of the things that I learned during this journey is that it's very easy to believe things because you want them to be true. What you've got to accept is, is that you're not so important that your desires shape reality. In fact, it's reality that shapes your desires. The reality is, one day, you are going to die. No amount of magic words from a book is going to stop that from happening. Another thing that I learnt was, you know when you see that religious person with that really big grin on their face that says, I have an inner peace that you can never imagine. Well I've had that and it's not what it looks like. You see that inner peace comes from the fact that you know the most wonderful, powerful, all loving being in the universe 
loves you. And because he's so infinitely loving, this being loves you infinitely. However, when you imagine this infinitely perfect being, you can't help but realize that compared to an infinitely perfect being, that makes you infinitely imperfect. You see, it doesn't matter how good a person you make yourself. You do more for charity, you're nicer to people, you're kinder. But no matter how good you are, even if you're the nicest person on the planet, compared to infinity, you are infinitely imperfect. Now you always try to improve yourself so that God can see you've made the effort and that God is pleased with you, but you always know that because there is such a thing as infinite perfection, you will always be infinitely imperfect. But that doesn't really matter because, you know, this infinitely perfect or loving being loves you anyway. He loves you for how you are. Which is really just the same as a husband who puts his wife down and at the same time builds her up by saying, everyone knows you're ugly, but to me you're gorgeous. So at the same time as being your source of all happiness, God is actually the source of your misery. You feel that without God's love you'll be absolutely lost and worthless. It's not actually the case that without God you are nothing. It's more a case that without God you are no longer nothing. Suddenly all of your imperfections, they're not infinitely imperfect anymore. They're average. I'm averagely imperfect. Admitting that I only believed in God because I wanted God to be true allowed me to stop wanting it to be true because what I want is irrelevant to reality and accepting that there is no evidence for God and certainly no evidence that anyone knows what such a God would want allowed me to suddenly feel that I didn't have to compare myself to an infinitely perfect being I was just me I was just a human that was born will live and will die <laughs>